How does stress and anxiety affect erectile dysfunction? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at some of the mechanisms involved with erectile dysfunction, including stress, anxiety, and other physiological things like nitric oxide, and how they all kind of come together to create erectile dysfunction. So if you're liking these videos and want to support the channel in a more financial way, look in the description. There's a link where you can make a donation. If you do make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. Helps me continue with these videos and put more uh, effort into them. Thank you again for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more like it. All right, let's look at the effect of stress and anxiety on erectile dysfunction. So how does stress and anxiety affect erectile dysfunction? That's what we're going to look at, but first we want to understand what is erectile dysfunction. And there's two main ways or two main manifestations of this issue. For most, it's going to be the inability to maintain an erection once one is achieved. And in some cases, people can't even get a full erection, and that would also be considered erectile dysfunction, and that would, in most cases, going to be a more severe situation. The activity involved in this process is one that involves mostly blood flow, but there's both psychological and physiological things that need to be appreciated with this process of erectile dysfunction. Stress and anxiety fundamentally change the activity in the nervous system, shifting more to a fight or flight activity. And with this shift, several different things happen, uh, most importantly, a change in the blood flow. During stress, some areas of the body get more blood flow and some areas of the body get less blood flow. And this kind of coincides with the idea of fight or flight. And when we're in the classic fight or flight activity, the situation demands more blood flow to the muscles to engage in things like fighting or flighting. So that makes sense. The blood flow is going to be pulled away from different areas and pushed more towards the muscles in things that might be needed for fight or flight activity or stress, stress related things. And so it pulls uh, the blood, the nervous system will pull the blood away from the digestive tract and, and the genitalia and other organs and then put it more towards blood flow and circulation in muscles, for instance. So psychological stress and anxiety directs nerves, which then changes the blood flow in this manner. This is how stress and anxiety affect erectile dysfunction. So another way to look at this is through the lens of the autonomic nervous system, which is the parasympathetic rest and digest, and the sympathetic, which is fight or flight, which is what we're referring to earlier. But in order for you to get an erection, for males to get an erection, there needs to be sufficient parasympathetic activity to produce and maintain that erection. This is why it's common for erections to occur when, when they're sleeping as the body is in a more relaxed and kind of calm state. Because stress and anxiety can disrupt that parasympathetic activity, thereby disrupting the blood flow, it can trigger erectile dysfunction. With that happening, that erectile dysfunction can kind of create a psychological pattern as well, and the problem can get worse because you're worrying about if it's going to occur again. Almost becomes a self self-fulfilling prophecy because the more you worry about, the more likely it is to occur because of the activity of the sympathetic nervous system on the genitalia areas. Now, that does not mean that everyone that has erectile dysfunction or ED has it due to psychological reasons or that your ED problem is all in your head. It does mean, though, that there is a psychological component to erectile dysfunction that needs to be uh, appreciated when you're working with this problem and trying to uh, get a resolution. There's also a biochemical side to this as well, which I alluded to, and this has mostly to do with nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a potent uh, vasodilator, so it dilates the arteries, um, allows for that blood to flow to, to the area when it's not being restricted by the sympathetic activity. The problem is with nitric oxide, the actual molecule of nitric oxide is used up fairly quickly and its presence is fleeting. And many things can interfere with nitric oxide production and utilization because many things can interfere with the enzyme that produced this molecule. The main thing being free radicals. This is why most NO supplements are not very effective at increasing NO and actually helping with ED because the molecule itself is used up very quickly and any increased production of nitric oxide is going to be short-lived. 
You'll get more out of your efforts to improve erectile dysfunction if you focus on maintaining healthy testosterone and androgen levels, improving blood sugar and antioxidant status. These things will, will encourage optimal nitric oxide, oxide production and therefore blood flow to the genitalia. This is because testosterone upregulates the production of nitric oxide and reducing blood sugar will also reduce your body's overall antioxidant status. That is in the case that you have hyperglycemia, prediabetes, uh, diabetes, and things like this. If you have normal blood sugar, you can then just focus mostly on your overall antioxidant status on healthy lifestyles, things like consuming uh, products that have lots of toxins in them and overly processed products may have more, more likelihood to produce free radicals and then reduce your nitric oxide production. Okay, that should give you a better understanding of how stress and anxiety affect erectile dysfunction. Now, if you do have a separate question about anything in this video, please drop it in the comment section. And I'll be happy to answer, or I may do a separate video on that if there seem like there's enough interest. Thank you again for watching. If you like this information and want to see more like it, click on the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.